I had the yellow pages and the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, you can now find someone's complete career trajectory. You can find out what they're upset about on, you know, on Twitter. You can find out if they have grandchildren on Instagram. So if you're reaching out cold, you have a way to find out about them so that you can offer some sort of help. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell every single listener that you all have superpowers and secret sauces, and they're going to change from year to year, even maybe from month to month. And... You know, if you can't figure it out yourself, ask your friends, ask your loved ones, ask your partner, ask your dog, okay? But literally, uh, there there are things. You could be a fabulous cook. You could know a foreign language. You could be great at jump rope. Um, but, you know, when, when a young person comes to me, and I, 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 shouldn't, I, I shouldn't use those qualifiers, but if somebody's just out of college, this is a generalization, but I have found that they are better equipped with some new technologies that I might be. Okay, again, generalization. So I often say two words, TikTok, which I have yet to figure out, but being a communications, a head of a communications firm, I need to figure it out. So I think what we need to do is is get rid of the, the naysayers in our brain, which believe me, I have many of them, and really just think about it. And and also be, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask others. You know, it was um, back in 2007, I went away with eight, um, friends and we went up to the Catskills which is a couple of hours north of New York City and our goal that weekend was to be able to articulate our superpowers our elevator speech and it was that weekend that I finally got the guts to say I'm Susan McPherson I'm a serial connector well after I said it I almost peed in my pants because it <laughs> sounded so ridiculous but I had eight dear friends saying to me yes you are and what 16 years later, I wrote a book on it. So what I think for the advice for people who are struggling is, you know, just start making lists and, and also know that it, it doesn't have to be you're a rocket scientist. Although that seems to be the flavor of the day right now, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> Absolutely. I think for young people, it's also important to, regardless of how they feel about themselves or what they have going on, to set up some sort of mission and it doesn't even need to be a major one that's going to take the rest of their lives to, to get to just something small to, yeah. to get them focused on themselves where they are and what they're going to have to accomplish to to end that mission and that's yeah. going to get them some great insight about who they are how they learn and what that and and some small inklings of what they're actually capable of when we see young folks today, I mean, they have all the technology they have to consume oh all the information that they need. So to put that, to, to put the phone down and decide, here's what I'm going to learn, here's what I'm going to do, and taking those steps to it. And I've, I, I've, I mentor uh, a lot of young men, and one of the things that I hear, the, the, the reason, the, the time and place where they have decided to get mentorship or to, to start a mission is when they realize that they're spending time with technology developing a character or an avatar that is online so that they get perks in a virtual world. And right. for some men, all of a sudden, they're like, wait a minute. I'm putting hours of effort in to be rewarded in a virtual world. What happens if I just decide to spin that and start developing myself in the real world? And what are those perks? And those perks are going to be the building blocks of who you are, your abilities, the superpowers that you've mentioned, how you're able to help other people. Another thing I'd love to share in all of this is, you know, I'm almost 40 and my network when I was in my early 20s was small, but it's grown exponentially because once you make a connection, then everyone in that person's network is one degree away from you. Yeah. So yeah. even if you're yeah. starting out now and you feel like, hey, I really only have a couple friends from college, you know, I had that one professor I really clicked with, that's okay. 
because yeah. investing in yeah. those relationships, as we see, led to you 18 years later writing a book. Like all of these wow. things take time and a little bit of patience, but the exponential growth and the payoff from the reciprocity that giving people five minutes of your time, favors and support provides has worked incredibly well in our career trajectory. I never Absolutely. would have thought of it in my 20s. No, and I think I think what Johnny, you were just saying, I mean, doing that little bit of research before you reach out to people, whether they're people you know or people you don't know, they have all the tools they need to do that. I mean, when I was coming of age professionally, I had the Yellow Pages and the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, you can now find someone's complete career trajectory. You can find out what they're upset about on, you know, on Twitter. You could find out if they have grandchildren on Instagram. So if you're reaching out cold, you have a way to find out about them so that you can offer some sort of help. And again, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be, you know, writing them a check for a million dollars or, you know, solving their marital issues. Okay. But I mean, it, 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 it just do a little bit of research. And I, I think, um, AJ, what you said, I found fascinating in some of the research that people we, we meet or people have affected our lives who we have never met because of the people we have met. Does that make sense? But then mm -hmm. there, I mean, I, it's one of those things, like if you think too much about it, you go crystal woo over. <laughs> we, we talked about that exact thing and the influence of friends of friends and yep. the impact yeah. that they have yeah. on our life, our views, yeah. our beliefs, our character, and surrounding yourself with the right people it takes a little bit of effort at the start, but the payoff, as we talked about, is so tremendous. And you bring this up in the book, the reciprocity, the power of the invite. I mean, these are all things that we talk a lot about here on the show because it doesn't take much. For yeah. you, it may seem like if I'm starting at zero, I'm going to have to master something. I'm going to have to be the best TikToker in the world. That's not the case. Yeah. Having five minutes of your time to help set up your professor's TikTok so he's producing content to grow his audience could pay off in his career and in turn lead to him looking for opportunities to give you a favor, to make an introduction, to open a door for you. And that's the thing, we all have these strengths. We just maybe haven't spent enough time really cultivating or thinking about it introspectively. And what we love, absolutely love, is what you covered in the book, this idea of hosting people and bringing people together instead of waiting for your invite. And that's another common excuse we hear you know, oh, the weekend comes around, I don't have anyone reaching out to me. Well, why don't you reach out and plan? Because once you start inviting people, even if they don't show up, they still feel an urge through reciprocity to invite you to yeah, the next thing yeah, that's happening in yeah. their life. And I've had tons of connections made when that person didn't show up to my event. They didn't <laughs> come to my party, but they still ended up remembering me and inviting right. me to something going on right. in their life. We drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Well, there was a, a study that I showcased. Um, a researcher in Utah decided to just send 600 Christmas cards to people he had no idea who they were. and he started getting back Christmas cards. And even for like 15 years, he would get Christmas cards from those people who he had never met, but it was that act. So I think what you just described is exactly that, but in, in like real life. And we're all yearning for that yeah. connection. Yeah. And if you are the one who takes a little bit of impetus, a little bit and put yourself out there, you're gonna be amazed at what comes back in return. And it may not come back exactly the way that you did it, meaning you might not get a favor instantly, and they might no. not do specifically what you're looking for, but over time, the long trajectory of our lives and careers, you're gonna see all of these doors open from these small favors that you provide others, the value you give those around you. Now you brought up something else that I know a lot in our audience are struggling with as well, and that's listening. You know, many of us have a never ending to do list, a calendar of meetings, things we got to do at home, things we got to do at work. And of course, this little device in our pocket that we've been talking about to distract <laughs> us. What did your research show around listening and becoming a great conversationalist? And, and what tools can we bring to really foster and cultivate better listening skills? Well, we're horrible at listening. And the pandemic has made it even worse because as you mentioned, 
you know, notorious uh, distractions, including the phone, um, you know, children at our feet, pets at our feet, you know, whatever is, is, has been, but even before the pandemic. Um, and again, I am not singling myself out as being an exceptional listener, but what I have learned is by not listening, you can't get from the ask to the do. Uh, and you actually miss, like what if somebody told you they were giving you a million dollars, but you weren't listening? You would miss that and being facetious. But um, I spent some time interviewing um, a gentleman named Dr. Julian Treasure, who is one of the world's foremost experts in listening. In fact, he's done four or five TED Talks just on listening. So I would suggest that your listeners listen to his TED Talks. However, um, a couple of tips that he gave me. One is to stop our anticipatory listening. And I am guilty of this, but when I'm listening to people, I'm already so excited to get to the do, I'm already thinking about how I'm gonna respond rather than just listening, okay? The second thing is, is this is natural. When we are listening to people, our minds wander. So, you know, while you're, you're talking, I could be thinking about the Thai food I'm gonna have for dinner tonight or the dishes in my sink. Um, but it is totally acceptable, one, to be taking notes, especially if you're in a, you know, a conversation on a, on a business or, even at an event, um, you know, I, I sometimes use my phone, but of course I say I'm not looking at my email, I'm, I'm actually taking notes. But the other thing that I've learned is it's totally acceptable to say, you know what, I wasn't, for a second I zoned out. Do you mind, AJ, repeating yourself? Because that in itself is a very wonderful gift we can give to one another. Because first of all, it shows a bit of vulnerability but it also is respectful, right? You caught yourself and you really want to hear that person. And you know, 99% of the time, they won't be upset that they have to repeat themselves. They'll be happy because they want to make sure they're heard. 